Hey everybody, it's me, Mr. Train. You know, I had so much fun last week teaching you about our neighborhood birds that I can't wait to teach you new things about how to discover and wonder. Come on! I am so excited and so grateful that the Hoboken Public Library has brought us together again. My name is Mr. Train, and if you can't tell, I love birds. I love learning about birds, I love watching birds, and I love teaching about birds. And today, I want to introduce you to a wonderful new idea about how looking at birds can really make us feel grateful and happy and joyful. I'm going to take some time to show you how by just stopping and wondering, you can discover a whole new way of learning. It's going to be really fun. So let's go learn together. One of my favorite things about learning about birds is I always have new questions. In fact, I've come up with a great name for all my questions. I call them bird brain teasers. And I always love it when other people ask me bird brain teasers because I always discover something new. In fact, one of my birding buddies, Marcus, had a great question from last week. Let's refresh our memories and take a look. Mr. Train, I just noticed something. That is... Mr. Train, I found another nest. Look, another nest. What a great question, Marcus. Now, if you remember, I promised an answer, and I have one for you. One of the things that I noticed was that all of those nests were high up in trees, they were roundish, they were made of leaves, and they were messy, which tells me that it's probably not a bird who lives in them. Why? Well, birds don't tend to construct their nests out of leaves. They use a lot of things, like dirt and mud, and twigs and dried up grass, and string and bits of trash they find, and even some of their own feathers for warmth. And this is just one of many examples of how birds can take these ingredients and create a nest. This is a robin's nest, and you can see the dried up mud and dirt and the bits of grass that have created this robin's nest. What an amazing gift to watch. But the ones that you asked about in your video don't seem to be bird's nests. So that brings up a good question. Who could possibly live in them? Well, it turns out that those piles of leaves have a name. They're called drays. Drays are where squirrels live. Isn't dray an amazing word? In fact, aren't squirrels amazing? Have you ever just stopped and looked at a squirrel? What a great way to learn something new and ask new questions. Squirrels are just another neighbor sharing our communities with us. You know, looking at all those drays got me wondering, isn't it amazing how that pile of leaves that's a little bit of a mess actually stays together throughout winter, throughout the entire year, with all the windstorms and rain and snow? That's pretty unbelievable. It actually inspired me, which is what I love about a good bird brain teaser. So thank you, Marcus. And I want to share with you a fun song that I created teaching you about the differences between nests and drays. Let's take a listen. That's a nest. That's a nest. That's a nest. But that's a dray. That's a nest. That's a nest. That's a nest. But that's a dray. That's a nest. That's a nest, and here's a nest, but that's a dray. That's a crest. Birds are best. Do you like my vest? And that's a dray. We have chests. Birds have breasts. I think that's west, and that's a dray. When you're looking at nature, it's a good day. So take a walk and look for a dray. When you see one, you can say, hey, a squirrel lives there. While you're outside, you just may see some birds.
like the Blue Jay. J, 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 the Blue Jay say. From a nest, not from a drake. Have some zest. Take a quest. Find a nest or find a dre. I've discovered a trick about how to learn about birds and other things in my life that always keeps me open-minded and gets me asking a lot of questions. And today, I want to introduce it to you. Here it is. When we wonder, we discover. When we wonder, we discover. And today, I want to give you an example of a time that I used this and learned a lot about a surprise bird in my life. First, I want to show you a little bird that I saw a few weeks ago when I was out on a fun run. Let's check it out. Do you see that little bird hopping around in the bushes there? This is a hermit thrush, and he is not a bird that we see very often in Hoboken. And the only reason I was able to see this hermit thrush was because I stopped to wonder, and then I discovered. And it was pretty amazing. This is a bird that we don't get to see very often in our city. The only reason he was here was because it was the migration and he was making his way south to be warm for the winter. And he stopped off in Hoboken to get some food, which reminds me that I'm starting to hear some funky music. It's time for a Mr. Train's Mr. Train, bird word. We have some scrambled up letters here. We have a G O R A F N E. Let's see if we can make a bird word with them. Gorfai? What does that mean? Anytime a bird looks for food, finds food, or eats food, it's called foraging. I love the word forage. In fact, I go around my house looking for snacks and I say, I am foraging right now. One of the things that I love about learning a word like forage is that now you can go outside and look for this behavior. Look for birds who are foraging. Ask questions. What does that bird eat? How much food does that bird eat? And where does that bird find food? Every bird needs to eat different food to stay alive. It's pretty amazing. So go outside and see if you can find some birds foraging. One of the things that I noticed when I was watching this hermit thrush was that he was foraging. It takes a lot of effort to make it down south. And so birds are always looking for energy as they fly and migrate. It looks like he's raking the dirt looking for an insect or a bug. You know, some people think that the hermit thrush has one of the most beautiful songs in the forest. Let's take a listen. Wow, doesn't that sound like a flute? I am so grateful to be able to see this bird in Hoboken. I want to give you another example of a time when I wondered and discovered. I went out on an actual wild goose chase. That's right, my uncle Tex and I went to look for a bird called the Greater White-Fronted Goose, and we made our way down to a bank by a river, 
and there were hundreds of Canada geese. Now, a lot of people think that Canada geese are not really spectacular birds, but not me. I think the Canada goose is amazing and beautiful. And so I scanned my binoculars across the Canada geese, and I took a moment and I wondered, I wonder if there's another bird in this group. <gasps> and that's when I noticed. It was the greater white-fronted goose that we'd been after. We celebrated, we did our lifer dance, and we reminded ourselves that it always pays to wonder because you never know what you are gonna discover. You know, one of the things that I love about wondering and discovering is I never know where the journey's gonna take me. Let me give you an example of what I mean. A few weeks ago, I was in Little City Books in Hoboken, and I was about to buy a book when I noticed there was a postcard on the counter that looked just like this. And it was filled with all the birds that I love. And I got to wondering, who was the artist who created them? And then I asked a question of the person who was checking me out. And she said, it's me, Marnie Filing. That's right, Marnie Filing is an artist who lives in Hoboken and she's written a book entitled Filing's Illustrated Guide to Nature in Your Neighborhood. Marnie loves nature as much as I do. And she loves going outside and exploring nature and seeing what discoveries she can find in her city. Then I got to wondering, if I love birds in nature and Marnie loves birds in nature, I bet there's a whole lot of people who also love birds in nature. And then we discovered something pretty amazing. We discovered an idea for an art competition. That made Marnie so excited that she went out and actually drew the hermit thrush that I saw. Isn't this amazing? One of the things that I love about it is that Marnie has included details about the things that she sees. That's one of the amazing things about drawing birds, because you can see so many new details. Notice how Marnie saw that it was a cold, windy day because the bird was all fluffed up, and she noticed that the bird can jump sideways. We had so much fun that we knew we discovered something very cool, because we created an opportunity where you get to go outside, look for birds in your neighborhood, and then draw a picture of that bird and teach me about all the things that you discovered. This is the official contest form, which you can find by clicking on the link posted beneath this video on hobokenlibrary.org's page, which will take you to Mr. Train's Facebook page, where I have also included submission forms for the contest. We are so thankful to Marnie Filing, who will be helping me to judge the artists and will be providing an autographed copy of her book to one of the finalists. I am also grateful for Little City Books. They've offered us a $25 gift card as a prize. And we are thankful to Wild Birds Unlimited for offering to provide a bird feeding starter kit as a grand prize. Remember that artists should be in first, second, third, fourth, or fifth grade, and everyone must have fun. You can also find everything you need to submit your pictures by searching for and liking the Mr. Train's Life Lessons for Better Birding and Beyond Facebook page. Be sure to get your artwork in by February 1st. I will be announcing the winners in a special Valentine's Day episode. Good luck and have fun. Before we say goodbye today, I want to leave you with one new bird brain teaser, which I'll answer for you next week. Hi, Mr. Train. My name is Max, and I am 11 years old. And I have a question for you. Do birds have a sense of smell? Wow, what a great bird brain teaser, Max. Tune in next week and find out. Can you believe how much fun we had today? We learned a lot about some amazing birds. We learned that it always pays to wonder because we never know what we're going to discover. And we discovered an amazing art competition where we get to share our love of birds and nature with other people. Doesn't get any better than that. Until next time, keep your eyes to the sky.